Hey there, Creaser. Thought I'd record a quick tutorial just to show you how to do some tracking, uh, motion tracking in After Effects. You mentioned back over here that you wanted to preferably do it in Premiere, but Premiere does have a mask tracker, which is really cool, but After Effects is really the place to do this in. Um, so I don't know what kind of footage you have. I know you said your camera was moving. The camera is not moving in this clip, but the plane is, so that's just as good. So it's just an example. Uh, so the first thing you want to do is go to Window and Tracker. And we're going to track the footage. So you click on your clip and then you track motion. Um, for you, depending on what you want to do, if you want to insert something in the scene the camera is moving, you actually could do the camera tracker. Uh, but if you just want to stick something to it, if you want to, in this case, we'll go ahead and stick the flare to the plane, we'll do track motion. It opens the clip up in the layer palette, layer panel, and we've got a few options here. So motion source is the only thing we got right now, our clip. The tracker we want to use is tracker one here, track type transform. So, so far so good. Um, but as you can see, the plane is getting bigger as it goes down in time. So not only do we want to track the position of it, we want to track the scale of it. So it creates a second track point. So let's zoom in here. And when, you wanna, when you're tracking, you want to um, find points of high contrast. That makes an easier track. So let's go ahead and pick these two lights. These are high contrast. And we also want to take that inner target, and I like to just make it a little bit bigger. And so this inner, inner square here is what the track is looking for. And this is sort of like your wiggle room outside of here. So you want to make it big enough that if there's a lot of motion in your object, it can still find it, but you don't want to make it too big that it's tracking unnecessary stuff. So let's go ahead and do the same thing. So this way it covers it. And then it also has a bit of wiggle room. And so I happen to do this at the first frame, but had you been somewhere else um, down in the clip and you had moved it, you would have to track backwards, then forward. Doesn't really matter, it's okay. But I'll start here at the beginning and I'll hit this button to track forward. And so tracking is usually pretty quick. And what you're left with after the track is done is a bunch of keyframes. You can see if we hit U to twirl down the keyframes, you can see that is way easier than you doing it yourself and also way more accurate than you doing it yourself. So let's go back to the comp panel here and we will apply no light factory easy. Now there are a couple ways to do this. We could actually apply it directly to the clip um, and then we can apply the tracking data directly to the effect, which is cool, but less flexible. So let's go ahead and toss it. We'll create new solid. Call it KLF for no life factory. We'll apply it. You gotta make sure you wanna check the render alpha box. And now we can position it roughly here where the missing light is. And just for fun, let's choose the blimp flare effect. Turn down the brightness and scale it down. Color's not right, flare's not exactly right. That's not really the point. So now we've got our effect on a separate layer. We've got our clip with our motion tracking data. And then we click on the clip again, back in the tracker panel, we'll pull up the motion source again. I guess you probably didn't have to click on the clip and we'll pick the track again. And you could have done this all in one fell swoop, um, but we're doing it in a few steps. And now the trick here is that you click edit target and you apply your motion tracking data to a layer. In this case, we only have one layer we can apply to, which is the null or the solid layer. Like I said before, you could have actually applied the effect directly to the clip, and then this would have been an option. The effect point control would have actually uh, allowed you to apply the tracking data directly to the effect, but that would have limited where you, how you easily you could position the uh, flare after. So let's hit OK, and that's it. So if we click on the solid, yeah, that's not it, because I forgot to hit apply. So we pick the motion target. Now I hit apply. I want to apply to both the X and Y dimensions. 
there we go. So now I've got position and scale keyframes. And you can see the flare tracks with the plane. It's not in the right spot, but it tracks with the plane. So we can simply do a couple things. We can twirl down the anchor point and we can move the anchor point there. But that might not be what you want because when you adjust the anchor point, that changes the way things rotate. So maybe you want to create a new null object. You want to parent your, uh, your flare to this null and then move the null. It doesn't really matter. You have a few different options, but there you go. This way you're preserving the integrity of the tracking data and you're still able to move the flare a lot more flexible than applying it directly to the clip. And you can see it's not the best track. It's also a bit of a shaky clip, but you want to find a high contrast point um, and make sure you pick the proper, uh, the proper track type in what you're doing. So if your clip were rotating, maybe the plane was rotating a bit, which it probably was, I should have picked rotation. Um, or if it's not getting bigger, you want just position. It really depends. If you do position, then you're going to get just one track point. If you do rotation, you're going to get two. And basically the tracker needs to know what to do. So if it's rotating, it needs to know how it's rotating, which is why you have two track points. Um, but that's a, that's a quick tutorial. Hope it helps. Uh,